Hello everyone, welcome back to Aurelia City in City Skylines. In the past episodes, we were working on projects next to the river, which is dividing the city into two parts. We built lots of high density areas, we built a big detailed plaza, we finished the second end of the residential bridge and did lots of public transport infrastructure. I don't want to continue building along the river though, because it's time to move further away from the downtown and start working on the edges of the city, closer to the airport. Today we will build a really interesting little project located right in the center of this soon to be medium to high density suburb on the edge of the city. We will build a futuristic public transport depot together with a transport hub. Let's go. So right when we started building this second part of the city, it was clear that this general area will have some kind of a bigger uh, public transport hub because we had the railway from the main train station aiming in this direction and we also have some tram lines converging into this area. So for example, the one from the airport, the one from the residential bridge and also the one that crosses the river on that island in the river that we built some time ago. So. Like I said, lots of lines converging into this area and also we are on the edge of the city pretty much. So it makes sense that we build some bigger bus terminal here as well because it might be some kind of a station for long range buses that are just going to be going off the city and bringing people into Aurelia from you know various parts of the country for example and people may just uh, switch to the train that brings them directly into the main train station very quickly. So another thing that uh, made sense for this area was to combine the public transport hub with a depot as well, because like I said, we are on the edge of the city. Uh, we definitely have a lot of space in here. So why not build a depot? And this depot is actually going to combine uh, not only the, the trams and light rail, but also buses. I'm going to build it for buses as well. And as you can already tell from the time lapse, I'm doing some landscaping here. So the depot is going to be underground. So that should be something futuristic, something interesting. So uh, technically, how am I going to build this? As you can see, we are in the corner of that uh, main road and I decided that I don't really want to waste that much space on the depot. So I kind of want to keep it, well, not really minimalistic, but uh, definitely don't want to waste that much space and kind of build it more compact, let's say. So I just, I'm just preparing some, some loops, some kind of connections for uh, for the trams and the light rail and I also positioned the the train station it's elevated train station because this is some sort of a valley the railways are coming into this area a bit elevated so you know elevated station definitely makes sense and it's just going to be easier to just cross all these different lines right now i'm going to build a couple of uh, tram stops in here uh, in different directions or different places of this entire area so that different lines approaching this place from different directions can just use different stations. So that should improve the capacity of this area and it's just going to make it more interesting. So anyway, what's going on over here? I was uh, preparing some custom tracks in the road editor. I think that these are the light rail uh, tracks, but I got rid of the, the surface model basically and uh, the sidewalks and the road and only kept the tracks themselves because like I said, I want to have this uh, this uh, like underground depot, but there are going to be some tracks running on the surface level above the entire structure. And those tracks will obviously have to be, well, not really elevated. They are ground, but they are not pulling the terrain up. So that's something that you can change with the road editor. And like I said, I got rid of the rest of the model so that only the tracks remain. A lot of these tracks uh, on the underground level are going to be purely decorative. They are going to be just some uh, tracks uh, acting as basically parking for all the vehicles or maintenance places. In this, uh, in this uh, particular area, uh, there is going to be like an elevator. There is going to be an elevator that's going to bring the vehicles from the lower level to the top. Now, the reason for this is that uh, I'm just not going to waste that much space on some kind of a loop that would need to be there in order for the vehicles to just, uh, you know, kind of loop to the surface. So this feels nice and futuristic and, um, you know, it's just an interesting element, as I always say, right? 
So doing these elevators with procedural objects, of course, doing some of these beams as well. These beams are going to be forming the support for the roof of the depot, which I can already spoil it probably, is going to be glass because we can see through it. So that's going to be more interesting. But these kinds of beams are just procedural objects, uh, cubes kind of stretched. And I applied the same orange texture as I did for the airport. So it's going to be nicely matching the colors. Uh, I'm definitely trying to use this orange color in uh, some some various projects of the city because it's just a very nice color and uh, it really feels fitting that I'm using it in multiple projects all around the city. So these tracks uh, are just a single tracks and they are connected at the intersections uh, and uh, treated with the traffic manager connections. You could have seen that. And uh, just like I did in that Altengrad episode with the tram depot there, I was also using in here uh, the remove unconnected uh, tracks mod, right? Because otherwise we would have some very sharp turns for the tracks that would be even distorting the models. So this is much better. So this is basically a, a one-way connection through the depot. Uh, trams should be just entering like uh, one direction and leaving with the other direction only, which is going to make it uh, just much, much better, much more uh, organized. Now, these elevators, some of them, I'm having them uh, kind of just decorative, obviously, on the top surface. Uh, one elevator is right on the bottom and uh, a couple of or one elevator, I think, is just in some kind of a middle position going going up and down so that uh, it's going to be clear that this is like a moving part and uh, some of the some of the elevators are just at different positions i placed a building there on the side which is probably some kind of a main maintenance structure or office building for the depot i definitely tried to use only short structures so this one floor building feels uh, feels very appropriate for this location because this place uh, is going to be in the middle of a high high density, I guess it's going to be high density uh, residential area. So that's another thing that not only it needs to look somewhat good, you know, it's not going to be like in the middle of some industrial park or something. So it should be looking, uh, looking good for a residential area. And the fact that it's going to be underground, you know, hidden behind some roof or underneath some roof, it's also going to limit the noise, I guess. So, you know, it's just uh, going to fit this place uh, a bit better. Doing more of these beams here and there, kind of trying to position them so that the entire structure is going to look a bit more interesting. Not exactly following some specific geometry here, just uh, trying to do the corners so that they are not exactly 90 degrees. Later, I'm going to add more beams in those corners for that reason as well. And uh, this is something that I probably should have done before adding the beams. And that's just the detailing on the on the bottom level, because I usually just try to focus on the larger picture, which means that I with these kinds of projects, I usually do the top levels first. And then I'm kind of struggling to return back to the lower levels for some uh, for some smaller scale detailing. So with this project, I was really struggling to not do that even though I did place the beams, but I haven't placed the roof yet. So, you know, that's nice. So I was not exactly sure how big I wanted to have this depot at first. So I kind of just did the landscaping in a larger area than the depot is actually going to be in at first. And then I started doing this uh, almost final detailing to have a better idea about the size of this place. So obviously using a lot of the node controller functions as well to create these very nice and smooth turns for all the tracks and uh, just creating some of these borders around the tracks and inside of the intersections, for example, here and there to just make it more interesting. And then doing the surface in here, which is again something I should, I should have probably done after I was finished with the detailing uh, underneath, but uh, oh well, I did it this way. But uh, it was actually for the better, I guess, because like I said, it's just going to uh, allow me to have a better idea about this uh, place in general so that I can just decide how it's going to continue. So doing those surfaces there, only where the top tracks are, and it's all kind of uh, bordered by that uh, railway border network. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, the one that I'm using uh, all the time. So that was pretty much done. The rough outline of that place was done, but I really wanted to 
al already figure out how am I going to do the second portion of this entire public transport hub slash depot. So I really wanted to start doing the bus terminal. Now in City Skylines, I have a bit of a problem with creating bus terminals because in real life, a bus terminal would usually be, well, not usually, but it could be some kind of a big open asphalt space with only the platforms kind of here and there, right? But in city scans, you obviously have to use the networks, you have to do the roads. So you can't really just paint like an area and then say a bus is going to stop there and there and people are going to go there and there, right? So you have to use the networks and you kind of need to connect them together using some pedestrian paths. I have been watching, uh, lately I've been watching uh, Skibitz, uh, Little France, when he was doing the bus station near the near a train station that he did recently. And, uh, well, I'm not actually sure when this video is going to come out, so maybe it's not recently at this point. But uh, he was also doing uh, pretty much what I said. He was just painting like a, like a surface. Well, not really painting, but creating it with different surfaces and putting the networks kind of hidden, invisible underneath that. So it's looking much better than what I did here. But uh, I was not exactly all that... Uh, all that experienced with bus stops, to be completely honest, because I haven't built that many in uh, in uh, in the city, and I'm pretty sure that something similar, uh, like I did right there, was uh, built in the Rockdale city for a bus terminal. So I was just reusing that old concept. But in the future, every time I'm going to do some kind of bus terminals, I'm definitely going to try to do the approach of just creating like a bigger asphalted surface and putting maybe in a, even an invisible a network for for the actual paths for the buses. That's probably going to look much more, much cleaner and maybe even a bit more realistic, which is not really something that uh, it's necessary in Aurelia, but uh, it might help the entire situation. But anyway, this kind of bus terminal is looking fine. It's just having those four networks kind of splitting from the input road and just merging together. Again, it's going to be a one-way stop. Uh, buses are only going to be allowed to enter the station from uh, one side. I also built like a dead end uh, bigger street in there, which is going to serve as some sort of a, like a short term parking for the buses, maybe if they are going to terminate here. But uh, continuing on their lines, just a couple of minutes, then they can just be parked right there. I also did a procedural object entrance towards the underground part of the depot. I didn't really comment that, so let's focus on that a bit more. Uh, I just used a bus prop and I did some kind of an entrance to kind of, uh, you know, have that bus there to measure the sizes. And I basically cut a hole into the building with procedural objects so that uh, we might have some kind of an entrance to the underground level. And I did place a functioning bus depot, which is hidden uh, again by procedural objects buildings on the top. So this place is going to be functioning as a proper bus depot. Unfortunately, it's not going to work the same way for the trams and light rails because I can't just make it work with the elevators, obviously. So we will have to figure out a different position for a functioning depot for trams in the city. I'm thinking I'm just going to make it somewhere underground, completely hidden from sight, so that uh, it's just going to function. But, uh, you know, we can just uh, consider this depot to be the functioning depot of the city. This is where all the vehicles are going to come from, right? So this is what exactly what I was saying. I was just improving some of the corners with these orange beams. And then I just decided to finish finally this uh, second part of the of the overhead uh, rails uh, above the, the depot area. You can already kind of tell how the inside is going to look because I also extended some of the tracks uh, on the on the bottom level and uh, just placing some of the vehicles there already to kind of measure the sizes of them and spacings and stuff. Also doing the surfaces in here with uh, the procedural objects. I'm uh, trying to use the, uh, the, the circle uh, shape for these gravel surfaces and then merging some nodes together to just have uh, you know, as many nodes as I need or vertices as I need for those kinds of shapes. It would have been probably a bit too uh, difficult to do it with just a square. So it's much better to just uh, merge vertices with, uh, with the circles. This is very important, something I probably should have started with as well, doing some kind of retaining walls to mark the edges of the surf, uh, sorry, the bottom level, the underground level of the depot. They are just going to be right underneath these beams. I only placed it uh, outside there 
and uh, did all the nodes that I needed, uh, you know, outside of the of the depot area because otherwise it might have been uh, connected to some of these other networks that I was doing here. Again, this is probably something that I should have done at the start, but uh, as you can see with Move It, it's not really that big of a deal to do it this way. It's just that you need to do it somewhere else and then just uh, push it into the place and do these kinds of fine tunings to put the nodes everywhere where they need to be. So uh, this is pretty much the the uh, bottom level of the depot finished. I was then uh, doing some kind of procedural object changes and just some tweaks here and there. I'm not really showing all of that because it was mostly experimenting because this is just the kind of project that requires a lot of experimenting. So I'm just really showing or trying to show in the time lapse the, the parts that uh, eventually made it into the final thing, right? Doing some of these borders on the surface level uh, with some fences that are later going to be just uh, bordered by the grass in here like this, which is, you know, looking, looking very, very good, I think. Even though some of these shapes of the beams, of the orange beams, I'm not at least I was not exactly super satisfied with. I was kind of struggling with putting some buildings around this part. So for example, when you saw me cover that bus depot with those two procedural object buildings, I was really experimenting with that a lot. But I eventually just used these because, uh, you know, it felt, uh, it felt okay. It wasn't anything all that super impressive, but it was okay. And also we have this, uh, this connection back into the main street. In there, I was just using some node controller to make it wider again, and then doing the border here with the fence because I already had it loaded uh, in the in the copy paste function of procedural objects. But I basically just used it as some kind of some sort of a, like a lower curb underneath uh, the rails, and then extending the gravel all the way there because there is obviously not going to be a road into the depot. So uh, I decided to finally do something about this loop. And I should probably mention why this loop is even there and what's it going to be for. So this loop is going to be functional. Trams are going to go on it. Now we have uh, how many? We have two lines of trams going into this area. So uh, hopefully I'm going to explain it correctly. One line is going from the airport terminus station and that's going to be the line that's going to continue to the island on the main river. So that's a line that's not yet finished. So it's just going to go into this residential area, soon to be a residential area. And uh, I'm just going to be pushing some kind of a loop, you know, in front of me as I build and eventually I'm going to connect it to the island. At least I think that's how it is. And then we have the second line, which is going from the residential bridge and that's going to be the line that's going to terminate here on this loop. So it's going to turn around on this loop on the side of the depot and just return back. At least I hope I didn't mix those two lines together. It actually doesn't really matter because uh, one line is just going to terminate here, turn on the loop, and the other one is going towards the airport, continues towards the airport, right? So that loop at first, I thought that it's going to be also above the depot area, but I just decided to cover it with uh, gravel and just grass around it. And that's going to be it. I also placed this uh, residential futuristic building in the middle, which is not really acting as a residential building. It might be some sort of a like a overview building, maybe like the main uh, office, maybe the main headquarters of the of the public transport company of the city or something like that. Or maybe just a depot a control station or something, because the depot probably is largely automated in this time period. So, you know, some kind of a some kind of a, a lookout uh, view might be might be needed for, you know, controllers and stuff. It's pretty much the same uh, same element that I built with that uh, cargo uh, airport terminal, right, that I did uh, some time ago. Anyway, doing some intersection markings with that intersection, that intersection is actually going to be extended uh, in some next episodes because there is going to be another road going down from that main avenue. But uh, this kind of detailing, you know, looking looking good. Finally, I decided to go back into the lower area and put some of the vehicles inside. So I'm making sure that I'm using all three. Yes, there are three light rail and tram vehicles in the city. So I'm using, uh, of course, the Alstom, the washing machine tram. Then, of course, the light rail, the longer, the UVZ, I think it's called or something. And uh, then I also must not forget about the rail whale, rail whale, which is uh, which is the vehicle that goes on the on the island city, and that's probably going to be the line that eventually is going to make its way 
into this area as well. So it's all going to be connected nicely. Yes, that's the rail whale. And uh, it's just going to be everything uh, connected. The net entire network, tram network, is going to be connected into this area. Also doing buses in this place because we had some place opened in, uh, in, the, in the bottom level. So why not put buses there? And I already had that functioning bus depot. So some kind of bus props in here also make sense. I placed a couple of those articulated buses in there because those I'm using in the city and uh, just having these lines of parked uh, smaller buses here and there. A couple of buses are kind of uh, made as they are leaving the depot in here. I'm also using these doors in here, making it look like these buses are just uh, going, uh, you know, going to rejoin their their comrades on the on the lines, right? Anyway, doing this uh, final step, and that's obviously the roof of the entire underground depot. Uh, I'm using glass, even though I'm thinking that this glass is probably the kind of type that might be uh, recolored with some kind of electrical impulses or whatever, so that, uh, for example, the controllers can just uh, reshade the the colors or maybe make them completely, completely, what's the word in English, you know, not see-through. Uh, if there is like a lot of sun just shining through so it wouldn't get that hot underneath it, and maybe they can just open it for the night or something like that. But in Aurelia, in the city skylines, it just looks nice if you have these glass surfaces because you can see through, right? I'm not really caring that much if it's uh, realistic. Well, obviously it's not. But uh, even like from engineering point of view, I'm just trying to really uh, make it look good and uh, justify the functionings later, you know? So that's definitely something that we have been doing quite a lot in Aurelia, or at least I was doing that. So just going to continue with that trend. Doing some improvements to the bus station here. So using some of these invisible pedestrian paths to connect everything together. And I'm not really showing it in here, but I also had to do the custom pedestrian connections to the platform of that elevated uh, uh, station track for the railway because uh, this train station comes with a lot of pedestrian paths uh, on the surface that I really don't need, so I had to get rid of them with Move It, with that, you know, Alt click select with Move It. But unfortunately, that also breaks all the so called pink paths in these buildings. So you have to put them back manually using just those invisible pedestrian connections. And this building is kind of complicated inside, it has the escalator in there and some kind of twisting paths. So I had to do all of that, but it was taking such a long time that I really didn't want to. Uh, bother you with that in the time lapse. But uh, right now, everything is working, everything is nicely connected, and people are using it. And this place is going to be super important because, like I said, this is going to be pretty much the center of some high to medium density residential area. So, this place is going to be super important. And I can already say that people are going to be using these stations, all of these stations, buses, trams, light rail, uh, railway, uh, a lot. Anyway, this is the transition. So as you can see, we have done something right in the center of that uh, valley area, uh, kind of far away from all the projects that we have been doing, right? So it's just the start of this of this part, even though in the next episode, I'm actually going to be uh, working on something slightly different. It was important to me to start uh, the center of this project uh, or center of this area and not really work my way towards it because I already knew, like I said in the beginning, I already knew that there is going to be some kind of a public transport hub. So it definitely felt appropriate to just start with it, right? So anyway, these are the finished cinematics. As you can see, uh, this place is very much alive with all the trams. There are those two uh, tram stops that I talked about so that the, the trams don't really interact with each other. Uh, too much and one of the line. Oh, yeah, yeah, the line that goes eventually to the island in the river is the one that goes towards the airport and the one coming from the residential bridge is the one that's terminating here. That's the one that's using this this uh, this tram stop right below the uh, the the railway station and next to the the bus station, which is kind of the description of the of the other tram station as well because they are the same, but uh, you probably understand what I mean. These are the elevators uh, for the for the depot area. There are just some cars going up and down. Also, I should mention that I did not put the the cables, the power cables on all of the tracks in the depot. Uh, 
I mean, I kind of tried to m make a reason for that, but at the end of the day, I was just lazy. I didn't really want to put the wires absolutely everywhere because they kind of destroyed the view, honestly. And um, some portions of tracks in Aurelia are not even having the cables. So uh, we already established in the lore of or Aurelia series that some of the some of the cars or pretty much all of them can run on batteries without the cables or maybe there are some induction charging whatever kind of technical solutions in the tracks or in the surface so the cables are not needed everywhere i did put the cables on the main tracks only because you know it just made sense to put them at least somewhere because they are continuing from all those uh, all those tracks that are leading towards this area right and also put them on the intersections you could have seen that Anyway, that is it for this uh, small project in the center of this uh, soon to be very big area that is going to form the edge of the city. So guys, thank you for watching this uh, tram depot or public transport depot episode. I hope you liked it. If you did, then you can put a thumbs up underneath the video. You can share the video with your friends. You can subscribe to the channel and you can also become a channel member by clicking the join button below. And if you want to join me for some live streams, then you can go to my Twitch channel, which is probably linked somewhere on this channel as well. So again, thanks for watching, take care and goodbye.